Sometimes I want to tell somebody like, okay, just do these 1,000 things and you will feel better. And they're like, uh, I'm depressed and have no motivation to get off the couch. Like, I can't do a 1,000 changes right. in my life. And then other times I try to simplify. I'm like, okay, just do these three things. Um, and then, you know, someone puts those into practice and they're kind of like, you didn't tell me I was supposed to change, like, how I eat. And I was like, well, I was trying to keep it simple, but yeah. Right, yeah. So yeah, there's like, there's a lot that we can do, but the real art to this is like, what's the right, rate of change, like how should you start to make these little shifts in your behavior, in your lifestyle, in your diet, so that it's actually doable and sustainable and not too discouraging and not overwhelming, but that you make enough of a change that you see an impact. Because it's also very frustrating to make any change and see no difference, and then it's like, okay, I tried the holistic route and it didn't work, and right. um, so people get pretty discouraged on either end of that. Um, but yeah, I think what I usually start with, and it's a little different for every person, but I like to start with sleep because I think that there are some, there's like low hanging fruit around sleep. Um, so many of us are exposed to light in the evenings in a way that's impacting our ability to sleep well. And so even just like little changes, like getting the phone out of the bedroom right. or um, even just making the lights in your home dimmer in the evening, even that can set you up to sleep better. And once somebody's sleeping better, everything else is easier. So like depression improves a little bit, anxiety improves a little bit, gut health improves a little bit. And then once all of those are starting to improve, it just gets easier and easier to make more changes. Mm -hmm. So I like to start with sleep, but in the background, I also want to just make sure people are making little diet changes uh, so that their gut health gets healthier, just so that they start to get the nutrition that they need to heal. That's great. Yeah, I, I can tell you personally, when we were launching Wealthy, that um, I wasn't sleeping nearly as well. I think of myself as a great sleeper. And then the spiral of feeling jazzed up and not in control of my emotions during the day was really significant. Yeah. Like I could feel the difference. And then all it took was, you know, a solid eight hours of sleep a couple of days after we had launched and everything started to return to normal. So yeah. I think it can have a crazy impact. And I know a lot of people say like, oh, well, I just don't sleep. Mm -hmm. You know, I just, I just need like four or five hours or I just can't sleep. Like they've given up on it a few decades ago or something, yeah. you know, no, I'm sort of like, what you know but what you, i don't you know you, there's it's hard to say something to, to yeah yeah that. giving up or even like sometimes it's a point of pride um, oh yeah like especially yeah. in a place like new york city and a few other pockets in the country it's like it, people are, are proud of being these like uber men who are like i you know i only need four to six hours of sleep and i get more out of life than the average person right oh i'll sleep when i'm dead and you're like well you may die sooner because you're not sleeping <laughs> Statistically, yes, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and I think that it's, um, yeah, we have a real, like, like not an eating disorder, but like a sleeping disorder as a country a bit. Um, so I think we all, like, look at rest as sort of slothful or lazy or decadent or indulgent and all this. And I think, like, ideally we all just start to shift and value it and recognize, like, this is part of how you um, not only can feel healthy and feel better, but also it, like, helps us be more kind and patient and compassionate people. Like, we'd all be a little bit better off if we put some value on sleep.